Hello world, I'm here today talking with James about his incredible CS50 final project. First of all, congratulations James on completing CS50. Yes, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. It was really a, a great time, I enjoyed it. So, um, but no, I'm excited to show you my project here. Yes, and exactly. So we'd love to hear about what you created and what was the inspiration behind it. Yeah, so this is a, a artificial intelligence tic-tac-toe game where I use machine learning to train my computer. Um, it is a series of training games, um, and then it allows you to either play against another human with hints of using the AI. It allows you to watch two computers play with the AI, which I programmed, or um, also to play against the AI, which I think is my coolest feature. Um, so what it does is it uses something called a SARSA on policy agent, and this is something that I had to research, but essentially what it does is it generates a lot of boards through training games, and it generates a quality associated with each of these positions. And then what it does is it takes a board out of a certain position when you play against it, and it compares it to past qualities, and then says, is this a move, or what move should it make in this position? Um, so there's a, a, maybe a lot that's behind that Sarsa um, like abstraction, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's really good. Maybe I can show you how it works here. Yeah, absolutely, would love to see it. Okay, so um, for this game, um, I have two options. I can turn hints on or off, and what this does is it shows you the value of the what the computer thinks is the best move in each position, um, where a higher number is a better move. But maybe like first we'll turn it off, so we can play without hints, and now we can play either with a three x three board or a four x four board. Um, you can even do higher level boards, but um, already the four x four board takes a little bit more time because there's just so many more possibilities. Uh, but we'll try both. So first starting with a three x three board. So let's see. Now we have three options again. So we can play a human versus a human. We can have two computers play against each other, or a human can play against the AI. So uh, maybe for a three by three, um, do you want to play against the AI and see what happens? Sure. All right. I sure. have a feeling like I probably won't win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the nice thing, and also there are three modes. There's easy, medium, or hard. Let's go with let's go with hard because that's always fun. All right. I change it based on how many training iterations it has. That's super fascinating. Okay. So that's a training first. Now you can move. Interesting. So, so tic-tac-toe with a 3x3 board um, is drawn theoretically. So they've proven if you go first, you can always draw, and also second as well. Um, but with a 4x4 board, I'm not actually sure. I think the first player can, can win automatically, but he's like, the, the AI has beaten me a few times right. uh, with 4x4. But 3x3, I, I think you can, uh, I think, you, yeah, let, let's see what you do. Amazing, there okay. might be hope. I'll go ahead, and I'll start with the bottom left corner. Okay. And then it, it One looks in the middle. Like... So it thinks the middle is the best move from the corner. Amazing. And so... So now enter uh, another move. <laughs> then I'll go ahead and I'll go with one. Let's see. Okay. And it blocks me. It blocks yep. me. Yep. All right. And now I got to stop it from winning. Yep. I think that's six. Six. Yeah, six. exactly. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Oh my gosh. This is terrifying. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. I think for this position, it's probably going to be a draw. I don't, yeah. think I, I don't think we can do three anymore. So right. here we can... Let's just start it again. Sounds good. So now let's play with hints, maybe. Do you want to try this? Yeah, let's do that. And now what we can do is we can have um, a three by three play board play against itself. So it's kind of satisfying to watch. For sure. And let's do impossible. So this will oh, just like gosh. have um, three, like two AIs. Oh, actually I played, I think I played against itself. Let me, no let me do that again. And actually, why don't we do, um, why don't we do a four by four board? Because we didn't get to see that yet. Sounds great. So let's do no hints. Let's do a four by four board. And let's watch two computers play against each other. I'm so, now, so excited. Yeah. So look, it trains a little slower because it's a four by four board. Right. But now we can see each move being put in by the NPCs. Let's see. Okay, so one looks like trying to go down. Okay. Interesting. So it blocks the, the down row. This is wild. Yeah, so, okay, I think this is a, it's a tie. Because I think when they're, when they're very good, and also it's the same algorithm, right. it probably will be a tie. Right. Um, but yeah, and also, I don't know if I showed you the hints feature yet, but if we turn hints on for a 3x3 three three board, let's do, let's do, um, let's do hard. So now this will show you the Q values in each position. So like, let's say the, the worst move you can do, I learned a little bit of tic toe for this game, is if you go on square two, or like the, any one of the, the sides that are not corners. Right. So if you go in two, the computer thinks the worst move in this position is at the very bottom. Interesting. So because it's the lowest number, or, or one of the tile squares on the side, but they're kind of the same. They're all pretty bad. 
So like for example, let's go um, let's go on eight. So now it thinks no matter where I go, it wins by force. So for example, I have to go in the bottom right corner because otherwise it'll get two it'll get three in a row. So that's nine. And then um, let's see. It thinks no matter where I can go, I can win. Why is this? It wins. Oh, because look, it sets up to connect three and or take a toe in three ways. So either You're the top right. corner or One. the middle, it wins. Exactly. So like if I go three, uh, the computer wins. So, That's yeah. incredible. The computer yeah. is trying to give you hints on how to play the game. Yeah, that exactly. Is genius. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I am absolutely. I have almost no words for how incredibly cool this is. Um, I also just wanted to ask really quickly. I know you've talked about you've learned so much information yes. to create this project, and from what it sounds like, you coded this training of the AI like all on your own, which yes. takes a lot of time and work. Do you want to talk about your favorite slash most challenging aspect of this? Yeah. So there were a few parts of the program which were quite challenging. Um, I think the hardest thing to do was create the the way in which the computer rewarded the um, the algorithm. So the way that this works is every time there's a good output, if there's a win for one computer, when they play against each other, it gives it a good reward. So it'll give it like a value of one. And there's a, a equation that's used in Sarsa, um, which Sarsa stands for like state action reward, state action reward. So it's like this process of having a state and then making an action or like putting down a, an X or an O at a state and then it'll give it a reward. Um, so that was difficult. Also creating, um, there's something called an epsilon greedy function which basically takes some sort of error, and it's what incorporates the computer to be able to explore when it's training. So for example, sometimes it will, if, it, if I didn't give it an epsilon greedy function, if it was just always doing the same algorithm that I thought was best, it would only go down one route because I thought that was the best algorithm. Right. But about 20% of the time, which I defined at the top in a global variable, it will take the epsilon or like the error, so it doesn't take the greedy route, and it will explore different possibilities which it hasn't seen before, so it gets more Gameplay, and I think the last um, feature which I want to draw attention to is something called the my hash and compress function. So this is something I got working after I made my eye work, um, and what it does is it actually gives me I think 64 times more computing power. Wow. And the way I did this is the compress function takes so since tic tac toe is a symmetrical game, we can rotate the same position in in one orientation is the same if you rotate it four times, and also if you flip it and rotate it for a game. So it's like the chiral orientation. Right. So what I was able to do is use a hash function to kind of compress all of those states into one board. Yeah. So that no matter if you when you put in a board, um, all eight of those will have the same Q value. And also vice versa, when it's training, it'll store it all as one value. So I think that's eight times eight, 64 times more power. Right. My math is correct, but um, it's definitely made it a lot more efficient with a lot less training games. Definitely. So I think that was the hardest part, but also the most interesting. For sure. That sounds incredibly complicated. Yeah. I am so excited to take a look at the code later on, um, but this is absolutely phenomenal. Um, you should be incredibly proud of all of the things that you've learned and yeah. what you've created here. Also, all of the different like inputs that you can give it, like what types of game, mm. all super, super impressive. Yeah. So one final question for you, James. This is super cool. It sounds like you're really interested in AI, and so I wanted to know like what's next for you or for yeah. this project. No, that's a, um, so I've actually been thinking about this quite a bit because um, before CS50, I was interested in just doing um, neuroscience because I like to go into medicine. Um, but as I've been exploring CS a little bit more and more, I've actually declared um, computational neuroscience, which is neuroscience with the computational track. Um, because um, with neuroscience, there's a lot of um, effect with the brain and like neural networks, for example. Right. Which is, this is not neural networks, it's a different kind of um, machine learning. Um, but this is something that I really am curious about and I want to learn about. So I actually want to take um, CS 181 to kind of learn more about this and uh, get better at uh, my CS skills. So yeah, it's been a really cool experience. I really want to learn more about it. Absolutely. It's been great. Yeah, well, this is a fantastic way to get started, for sure. So thank you so much again, James, for sharing. And congratulations on the entire semester. You should just seriously be super proud of Perfect. yourself. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. And thank you, James. And this was CS 50.